Welcome back, this is stage two of the whole process. So last time we would have left you, talking to Pro Touring Concepts about the whole ordering process and what you want to build, you know, and he'll help you out with that. Second stage, transport, brand new 200 Cruiser, comes to Townsville, comes to this place. It's called Australian Expedition Vehicles, or AEV. Now, what they do, they do the whole conversion process for you from start pretty much till finish. It'll roll back out of here on a truck down to Caleb to finish it off with wiring, canopy, bar work, etc. But they do all the engineering, they do all the body work, and they put the new chassis on. They also give us the new upgraded GVM and GCM. So I'll take you inside and I'll let you meet Mick. He runs the show and it's his engineering that gives us the upgrades. So let's go and have a look. G'day, Mick from AEV. Hello. This is the man, this is Mick from AEV. He owns the joint, he runs the joint, and he's the brains behind the business. So, well, I'm not just gonna give any old bloke a brand new 200 series to cut up. I wouldn't trust you with that, mate, unless I know you enough. knew what you were doing, yeah? Yep, so how many have you done in the past? Oh, we're up to about 30 at the moment of just the dual cab conversions and some other modifications to 200s. But um, yeah, this is, uh, I think we're up to about 15 of these particular versions that you're getting. AEV, mate, give me a bit of background about yourself and about the business. Yep, um, 30 years in Army, I got out, I was a senior engineer in there on a number of projects. <laughs> Realised that there was a market out there for upgraded uh, vehicles, particularly a military type spec one and hence de developed with Jason at J-Max and the six wheel drive and, and worked on some heavy duty versions for commercial applications. The 200 uh, is a good vehicle from factory. Um, as, a, as a wagon they're a bit limited in what they can carry so the dual cabbing and, and doing what we're doing to them allows them to go up a fairly significant number in a, a gross vehicle mass point of view yep. as well as a towing capacity yep. aspect. Well that's it, so that my big Oh, one of the big things for me choosing this sort of build is I need more payload. So I need a bigger GVM and I need a bigger GCM because I live on the road full time, I carry a lot of gear and I also tow a caravan, right? So one of the big things for everyone who's watching is a bit of a grey area about sort of the legalities and federal approvals and stuff. Now, you do all your own SSMs and engineering approvals. Can you give us a bit of a rundown about how that's achieved? Well, there's, there's no, no wiggle room in any of that. You've got to comply with the Australian design rules as they stand. The second stage manufacture system is a, just a pathway that allows a, you know, a, a pre-registration across all states approval to allow these vehicles to, you know, to be utilised um, you know, safely and built to a certain standard. So when we look at GVM, there is you know, only a physical number you can go to with these cars. So to design and engineer them up to another level uh, takes a fair amount of engineering effort. So what we, uh, we do a design approach where we do all the structural analysis and another thing called finite element analysis which allows us then to give a quantifiable, you know, how much it's going to deflect and yep. all those sort of things. So that your approval is individual to you, no one else can do this process and get the same thing done? That's correct. So the SSMs are, are to a licensed facility or to a company, they're not to individuals. Awesome. Well, I hope that kind of clears it up for you. I know there's a lot of questions out there among, especially the touring industry and the travellers about what you're allowed to do. So it's good to come and meet an engineer and talk about it with them and see what, well, you know, what's allowed and what they can do pre-rego seems to be the only way to go these it days. It is physically the, the best pathway to go. Um, from a vehicle point of view, much more difficult to get them comply post-rego. Sweet. All right, we'll go and have a look from when a brand new 200 series wagon rolls in here to when it gets back on the transport to head out of here. Basically, AEV is the first point of call for any of the 200 chops. Come in straight off the boat, either land in a port in Darwin or Townsville. Uh, basically, they get collected straight from AEV and they start the process here. So uh, they hold the federal SSM ticket for this 4495 J-Max chassis, which is a really big, important thing for us because we believe they do drive and handle the best out of any of the 200 chops on the market. Uh, there are a lot out there offering 4495, um, big GVMs, but the, the simple fact that the chassis is built so much bigger and stronger makes them drive um, completely different. And we've had two different types to sort of compare. So um, I'll give you a little walkthrough anyway for all the guys that are interested in our uh, 200 builds um, or already have got one in the making. This is sort of the, the process essentially. So obviously AEV do quite a few different uh, setups and stuff. They do a lot of stuff on the 70 series vehicle as well. Do the J-Max um, four wheel drive and six wheel drive attachments. Um, this one obviously being a six wheel drive looks pretty cool. But 
our main uh, component here with AEV is the 200s. So you can see here, basically, brand new, brand new Sahara VX or GXL. GXLs are probably the more common one, um, as because we're sort of cutting them in half and stripping all the nice fancy stuff out of them anyway. But all the internals actually get stored in another warehouse away from all the dirt, crap, dust and grime and all that sort of stuff. So this is a prototype vehicle we built when we are going through the development of this 4495 GVM kit. Part of it was making sure that we are going for as good a factory finish as we could achieve. And we achieved that by utilising the, the 79 rear panel that's particularly uh, you know, easy to install. We CNC laser or CNC plasma cut all the panels that go with it and we utilise an internal wall structure to achieve the rounded edges on the outside. But this vehicle was what was used to do all the testing so that we're able to make sure that the braking was correct, the load carriage was correct and the ability to actually manage that weight over a sustained period of time. So this has uh, achieved its purpose and you know, at the end of the day it just goes to uh, highlight fabrication and construction methods we utilise. So this side of the shed is where all the dirty work gets done, but all the really cool work. But basically, the grinder gets run straight through it once all the interior is pulled out. Um, chassis cut in half, and the new chassis clip is basically pulled on um, and welded into place. So. A big pulley system up here allows them to actually completely pull it over the existing chassis. The existing chassis stops about about there, about 600 mil up underneath the fact of the um, the new clip. Um, the new the uh, new J Max chassis basically gets pulled over in place, um, squared up, levelled out, obviously, so you're not crabbing down the road, and then um, fully welded in place. This is actually one of the factory diff housings. Um, what we prefer to do in the 200s is actually change the diff gears out of them to put a set of 4.3s in. Uh, you don't have to, but putting um, an extra one ton of load on a 200 series uh, can take, obviously it can work the, the transmission, work the engine a little bit more. Uh, so changing the diff gears allows it to sort of take a step back and actually give a little bit more torque at the tyres. Helps them out a little bit, helps with the high, uh, highway RPMs, um, and you just pure download torque. So that's what's happening with here. We're putting a new set of um, 4.3 diff gears into the J-Max housing. So not this old housing, but we still use the, um, the, the factory diff and just change the pinion ring on it. So Once all the uh, chassis and fabrication has actually been done to the, the car, it then gets sent over to um, paint and panel, where the rear wall panel is actually all welded in place, uh, painted up, looks, like, looks, looks like factory. It basically comes back here, we go to all our components, we've got the shocks, uh, springs, airbags, long range tanks, gift gears, wheels, tyres, bar work, all that sort of stuff can happen, happen here. Um, but we, what we do is we get the basic cab chassis assembled to a point, it's basically a pro-touring package, um, leaves here and then make, makes its way down south. So it goes to DPU, comes to us, we put the Norwell canopy on it, all the ARB work, bar work and all the bits and pieces. So. And then of course our major component being the electrical package. So Pro Touring Concepts don't actually cut a car in half. We use AEV to do it. It's their federal approval. So we'd rather leave the experts do what they do best. Um, and then we basically fit out the rest of the car. So tell me a bit more about the J-Max chassis because it's something that you have designed in Well, Jason, those guys. Jason's designed it based, or we've come together to base it on the six wheel drive chassis that we were previously doing. Yep. Um, the couple of minor modifications is the front um, lower control arm staunches are at a different angle and the rest of it. But at the end of the day, it, it's integrated with a three and a half, or sorry, a four and a half ton tow hitch, as well as a rear winch cradle as well. Nice. Uh, it can take all of the aftermarket tanks, the 180 litre jobs, and obviously um, standard suspension on the front when it comes to geometry. So control arms and, and radius arms and good all that stuff. sort of thing. So, Drivability, tell me what's uh, some of the good things about having the J-Max clip over a normal 650 extension and keeping your standard chassis. Well, the, the, the key improvement is we can we physically know how much this chassis will manage as far as load. Yep. With a Toyota chassis, they're never 100% clear on their numbers and they never tell you anyway. But this is guaranteed through our uh, 
structural analysis to take eight tonne. Nice. Just on the back, but we don't ever rate it to that. It was just so that we've got a number to work towards. And then all the componentry inside that is heavy duty. The axle goes from 2,100 kilos to 3,000 kilos as a gross axle weight rating, so it's another fairly significant jump. But the key outcome is the geometry is the same as a standard 200 as far as the axle, all the componentry and all the other uh, associated suspension parts are all standard bits of gear. Nice. As yeah, you can nice. see, I'm sort of blown away by how much sort of labour intensive work there is involved. So to cut one of these things in half, it's not just a simple chop, you know, you've got to actually strip the whole vehicle, tape it all up, look after everything, you know, there's sparks going everywhere, welding stuff. It's a big job, mate, I'm impressed. So. I'm super excited to see mine finish, mate. I Sorry. can't wait to get it. And I, we've got a little bit to go. It's over at the paint booth at the moment. A bit of bad weather up here in Townsville is holding us up because we don't want to paint it uh, while it's so humid and muggy because no good for paint, apparently. Not good at all. Not good at all. So after that, it'll roll out of here. And then uh, the next bid, it'll be the stage three of the process. We're going to take it down to Mackay on transport. We're going to diesel power, cookie. We're going to get a few performance upgrades. And we're going to show you all about that. So. Thanks for your time, Mick. Appreciate no. it, mate. Cheers, Justin. Thanks, it's good mate. stuff.